Chapter 39. Therefore thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beast of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forests, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hamon Gog, and seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land, to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth, to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamon Gog. And also the name of the city shall be Hamona. Thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves, and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my Spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Chapter 40 In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, and the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year, after that the city was smitten, in the selfsame day the hand of the Lord was upon me, and brought me thither. In the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel, and set me upon a very high mountain, by which was as the frame of a city on the south. 
And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I shall shew thee. For to the intent that I might shew them unto thee art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. And behold a wall on the outside of the house round about, and in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit, and an hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height one reed. Then came he unto the gate which looketh toward the east, and went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. And every little chamber was one reed long, and one reed broad, and between the little chambers were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within, one reed. Then measured he the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and the post thereof two cubits, and the porch of the gate was inward. And the little chambers of the gate eastward were three on this side, and three on that side. They three were of one measure, and the post had one measure on this side, and on that side. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate ten cubits, and the length of the gate thirteen cubits. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space was one cubit on that side, and the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured then the gate from the roof of one little chamber chamber to the roof of another. The breadth was five and twenty cubits, door against door. He made also posts of three score cubits, even unto the post of the court round about the gate. And from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were fifty cubits. And there were narrow windows to the little chambers, and to their post within the gate round about, and likewise to the arches. And windows were round about inward, and upon each post were palm trees. Then brought he me into the outward court, and lo, there were chambers, and a pavement made for the court round about. Thirty chambers were upon the pavement, and the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates was the lower pavement. Then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner court without, an hundred cubits eastward and northward. And the gate of the outward court that looked toward the north, he measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof. And the little chambers thereof were three on this side and three on that side, and the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. The length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And their windows, and their arches, and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looketh toward the east. And they went up unto it by seven steps, and the arches thereof were before them. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north, and toward the east, and he measured from gate to gate an hundred cubits. After that he brought me toward the south, and behold a gate toward the south. And he measured the post thereof, and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it, and in the arches thereof of round about like those windows, the length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And there were seven steps to go up to it, and the arches thereof were before them. And it had palm trees, one on this side, and another on that side, upon the post thereof. And there was a gate in the inner court toward the south, and he measured from gate to gate toward the south an hundred cubits. And he brought me to the inner court by the south gate, and he measured the south gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof, and the post thereof, and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it, and in the arches thereof round about it was fifty cubits long, and five and twenty cubits broad. And the arches round about were five and twenty cubits long, and five cubits broad. And the arches thereof were toward the utter court, and palm trees were upon the post thereof, and the going up to it had eight steps. And he brought me into the inner court toward the east, and he measured the gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof, and the post thereof, and the arches thereof were according to these measures. And there were windows therein in and in the arches thereof round about it was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad. And the arches thereof were toward the outward court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof on this side and on that side, and the going up to it had eight steps. And he brought me to the north gate and measured it according to these measures, the little chambers thereof, the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, and the windows to it round about. The length was fifty cubits and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And the posts thereof were toward the utter court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof thereof on this side, and on that side, and the going up to it had eight steps. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the post of the gates, where they washed the burnt offering. And in the porch of the gate 
were two tables on this side and two tables on that side to slay thereon the burnt offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering. And at the side without, as one goeth up to the entry of the north gate, were two tables, and on the other side, which was at the porch of the gate, were two tables. Four tables were on this side, and four tables on that side, by the side of the gate, eight tables, whereupon they slew their sacrifices. And the four tables were of hewn stone for the burnt offering, of a cubit and a half long, and a cubit and a half broad, and one cubit high, whereupon also they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And within were hooks, and hand broad, fastened round about, and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. And without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers in the inner court, which was at the side of the north gate, and their prospect was toward the south, one at the side of the east gate having the prospect toward the north. And he said unto me, This chamber, whose prospect is toward the south, is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the house. And the chamber, whose prospect is toward the north, is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok among the sons of Levi, which come near to the Lord to minister unto him. So he measured the court, an hundred cubits long, and an hundred cubits broad, four square, and the altar that was before the house. And he brought me to the porch of the house, and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side, and five cubits cubits on that side. And the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side, and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was twenty cubits, and the breadth eleven cubits, and he brought me by the steps whereby they went up to it. And there were pillars by the post, one on this side, and another on that side. Chapter 41 Afterward he brought me to the temple, and measured the post, six cubits broad on the one side, and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. And the breadth of the door was ten cubits, and the sides of the door were five cubits on the one side, and five cubits on the other side, and he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits. Then went he inward, and measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door six cubits, and the breadth of the door seven cubits. So he measured the length thereof, twenty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits, before the temple, and he said unto me, This is the most holy place. After he measured the wall of the house six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber four cubits, round about the house on every side. And the side chambers were three, one over another, and thirty in order. And they entered into the wall which was of the house for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold, but they had not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward to the side chambers, for the winding about of the house went still upward round about the house. Therefore the breadth of the house was still upward, and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. I saw also the height of the house round about, the foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side chamber without, was five cubits, and that which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. And between the chambers was the wideness of twenty cubits round about the house on every side. And the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left, one door toward the north and another door toward the south. And the breadth of the place that was left was five cubits round about. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was seventy cubits broad. And the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof ninety cubits. So we measured the house, an hundred cubits long, and the separate place, and the building, with the walls thereof an hundred cubits long. Also the breadth of the face of the house, and of the separate place toward the east, an hundred cubits. And he measured the length of the building over against the separate place, which was behind it, and the galleries thereof on the one side, and on the other side, an hundred cubits, with the inner temple, and the porches of the court. The doorpost, and the narrow windows, and the galleries round about on their three stories, over against the door, sealed with wood round about, and from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. To that above the door, even unto the inner house, and without, and by all the wall, round about within, and without, by measure. And it was made with cherubims and palm trees, so that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub, and every cherub had two faces, so that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made through all the house round about. From the ground unto above the door were cherubims and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple. The post of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and and the length thereof two cubits, and the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. 
And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. And the doors had two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other door. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made upon the walls. And there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. And there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side, on the sides of the porch and upon the side chambers of the house, and thick planks.